Every team in the SWAC is looking to bolster up their teams to make sure they had an opportunity to knock off Jackson State as the two-time SWAC champion. And you know, Coach Willie Simmons over there at you, he ain't wasting no time with trying to find those little diamonds in the rough here and there, making sure that he got that rally team ready to go ahead and take that next step forward to say they are the champs of the SWAC. Guys, they got a young man that's coming into the program that's definitely going to be a dynamo that's going to help the Rattlers move that offense a little bit more fluently up and down the field. We're going to talk about who that young man is right now. It's your favorite coach back at it again. Tip toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow League Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap me in the free to tell them to come on in. It's not a positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump on in this thing. And I'll be like, Coach, wait a minute. Here you go again, Coach. You've been on this bull junk for the past couple of times that you didn't came on here and dropped these shows. What you got going on in your pocket this time? Well, listen. We've seen the NFL draft has come and gone. And a lot of the athletes that play in the FCS, HBCU uh, conferences, a lot of them got they, a lot of them got undrafted free agent uh, deals. And they're going to have the opportunity to get out there and showcase their talents to those NFL teams, letting them know that they can get out there and ball. Well, like I said, former receiver uh, Xavier Smith for FAMU, he's moving on. He has him a... Uh, undrafted free agent deal as well. But you got to understand, he was a key component within that Rattlers offense last season. I mean, this young man caught, was it 87 passes for 1,021 yards, had 11 touchdowns, was averaging, what, 11 yards per catch? I mean, that's a big deal when you have something like that leave your offense. So I got to salute uh, Xavier Smith on getting that undrafted free agent deal because he's, gonna, he's heading out to L.A., out there with the L.A. Rams, to be alongside of a coach that he knows very well, and none other than Coach Black, who was formerly over at the FAMU Rattlers. That's right. He coached with uh, Coach Willie Simmons over uh, at the Rattlers last year, and he also, Coach Black, also played in the SWAC. So let's, hey, salute Xavier Smith on that. I'm glad to see he got that opportunity, and I dang sure believe that young man is going to be one of those ones that's going to be on that 53-man roster when it's all said and done. But now that Xavier Smith is gone, who's going to come in and pick up the pieces that, you know, not, not necessarily pick up the pieces, but who's going to pick up that slack? You got QB1 Musa, who was able to find open receivers last season. Xavier Smith was that guy. Just got to be honest about that, guys. And then you had Jamar Sharid, who was able to come in and do his thing as well. A lot is going to be on Sharid's shoulder as far as with making sure he's able to pick up that additional slack as far as... Um, the, the, uh, those opportunities that's going to be there now that Xavier Smith is no longer within that office. Now, one thing I say is this. Coach Willie Simmons, when I say he found that diamond in the rough, let's keep one thing in, let's keep one thing in perspective. Jamar Sheree was the second leading receiver on the team last season with 25 catches for 585 yards, three touchdowns, averaging 13 yards per with catch. All of that being said, Coach Willie Simmons truly understood, I got to add a little bit more spice to this daggone offense. And that's what he did. He found him a young man that's from Tallahassee. And I'm sure a lot of people in Tallahassee, they know this young man very well. I mean, he played over Ricard's high school, being a dual threat quarterback as well as receiver. I mean, again, you heard me say earlier, Xavier Smith, I consider him a Swiss Army knife. Well, guess what? Here is your Swiss Army knife once again that has just dropped in the pocket of none other than Coach Willie Simmons and the Family Rattlers football Definitely team. Definitely looking to come in there and add a significant boost to that offense, especially in that wide receiver's room. I mean, this young man is going to be a mismatch out there on the field no matter where you line him up. You can line him up in the slot. You can line him up out wide. It doesn't matter. Wherever you put him at, it's going to be a problem. So trust me, they're gonna, the Family Rattlers is definitely going to be looking to open up that, that playbook to show everybody, hey, listen, you're going to have to come in here and study us from top to bottom to make sure that whatever it is that we throw at you, you're going to be ready for it. And if you're not, we're going to gas you all game long. I know y'all like, well, Coach, who the heck are you talking about? This guy sounds like he's just that dude. Well, I'm talking about none other than Mr. Marcus Riley, former quarterback turned wide receiver 
transferred from Bethune-Cookman University, who was the leading wide receiver for the Wildcats last season in 11 games. Riley caught 39 passes for 553 yards, three touchdowns. Now, Riley also averaged 14.4 yards per catch. Now, I know a lot of you like, but wait a minute, hold on, coach. That can't be so because you had Kamari Everett over there. Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Kamari Everett was the second leading receiver on the team. Remember, a lot of times last year when you had people that wanted to double team Everett, you know, to keep him from getting the ball, who was open? You had other receivers out there on the field that were open, and they were averaging between 11 and 14 yards per catch. So this addition to the Rattlers offense should bode well with what Coach Willie Simmons and that offense is looking to do this upcoming season. Line this young man up anywhere out there on the field, and trust me, if they catch you slipping and he's lined up against one of your linebackers, and that linebacker is not a tweener, meaning a corner as well as a linebacker, a linebacker that can cover, oh, that's going to be your behind, Mr. Post, man. They're going to look They're going to look to go ahead and take off and do whatever it is that they need to do to make sure that this young man is open to catch passes, especially if you got a zone defense going. He's going to sit in those pockets within that zone for that quarterback to throw him the ball to keep those chains. This is a great addition for the family Rattlers football team. Can't wait to see the Rattlers line up this upcoming season to see exactly how things you know, turn out for this offense, especially now with Xavier Smith moving on out of the out of the offense, and you got Xavier Land as well as um, who was a big number ninety seven that just left and transferred out of the program, as well as uh, Bowler, uh, as, as well as uh, uh, BJ Bowler playing at the defensive back position. I just, I'm waiting to see how everything is going to be. There's been a lot of changes to a lot of different teams within the SWAC as far as players moving on and players coming into the program. So. We're going to sit back. We're going to watch how this all is going to take place and trust and believe we're going to see more great football within the SWAC football conference. But guys, Coach going to go ahead and get up on out this thing. But until next time, be the one and lead.